it's always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot woot. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the September edition of Moda University. For you, those of you that don't know, Moda University is a fun fabric club that meets every single month. And we talk about the latest and greatest Moda fabrics, give you some inspiration and ideas. Typically, we meet in store. However, this is our seventh month of meeting online. I hope you have been following along. And if you'd like, you can look back on previous months. We are going to talk about some spooktacular fabric that we have for you today. So it's September and we're getting ready for Halloween. Halloween's right around the corner. For those of you that don't know me, Halloween is my favorite holiday. And these fabric packs are super amazing because we're going to be celebrating my favorite holiday. All right, let's take a peek at the fabric lines we have to show you today. So we have five amazing picks today. The first one is Ghouls and Goodies by Stacey Itsu. And we have eight magical fabrics that go from orange to a little bit of gray, purple, black. Nice ditzy prints here. We have some great little prints that can be used for a quilt a project, lots of fun. I love the little mummies that are in this line. The next pack we have is a grunge pack that is inspired by Halloween colors. So we have some orange, some grunge dots, purple, some gray. We even have some grunge stars and a little bit of black. Beautiful line there. Next up, we have Arboretum Metallic. This is an elegant autumnal line that has beautiful wheat, some leaves, some gorgeous paisleys, some beautiful flowers. Beautiful for a fun autumnal project. Looking at our dark colors, we had to pull together one of our favorite designers, uh, Can Kansas Troubles, and we put together two patchwork curated lines. One that is some beautiful deep colors ranging the entire Kansas Troubles spectrum. Look at this. Look at this floral on the back, black background. It's gorgeous. Some deep caramel colors here and some burgundies. And then, because I tend to gravitate towards these beautiful prints, I thought it would be wonderful to put together a background pack. So we have eight yummy, yummy, yummy Kansas Trouble backgrounds for your selection. So five beautiful packs. If one of these does not appeal to you, we do have a wonderful selection of previous months to choose from. And if you are not a Moda member, but one of these packs looks super exciting, please come into the store and we'd be more than happy to arrange for you to get one. Eight Fat Aids is one yard of fabric and we sell these packs for $13. So now let's look at a little bit more in depth into our fabric lines. So the first one is this Ghouls and Goodies by Stacey Itsu. So Stacey Itsu is one who does a lot of fun little dolls and really cool stuff that are often novelty or juvenile related. And this time, the panel has this fun little jack-o'-lantern and some other fun things. So I pin them up on the back. I'm going to pull them down. We have a fun cat and two amazing little bats. Oh, I just love the bats. I love them. Oh, look at them, they're so cute. I don't know if you've ever seen, but there is this little song. <laughs> 
and you can Google it. It's called Batty Bat. And what it is, is it's Count Von Count from Sesame Street, and he sings this cool bat song. So uh, you're just going to have to get this panel so that you can make the bats to sing along with the video. All right, so super fun, cute to put together. We put a little bit of decor bond in the bat wings. I could also see if you wanted to play around with this to play with the Batty Bat song. You might want to put a little bit of elastic on the back so that you could turn it into a little puppet. And then for our jack-o'-lantern, we used a little bit of soft and stable to give it some really nice structure. So super fun. You can store your candy in that. We might not be trick-or-treating this year, so we need to make sure that we are fully stocked with all the chocolate and candies to keep ourselves and our households happy this Halloween season. Just because we're not trick-or-treating doesn't mean can't go and eat the Halloween candy. We have all sorts of yardage for this, and then we have all the pre-cuts. So we have the mini charms, the layer cakes, charm packs, fat quarter tower, half yard tower, and <gasps> jelly rolls, which reminds me, it is National Jelly Roll Day today. Woot woot. We'll talk a little bit more about that today, but we have all of the different variations of pre-cuts available for this fabric line, as well as all of the yardage in store. With talking about this fabric, we are going to just hop into talking about this fun bag that we put together. So, you know, if you're collecting the Halloween fabric and maybe the little jack-o'-lantern's not enough for all of your candy needs, maybe you need to go to the Tory Tote to carry your chocolate around. At the store, we were thinking, you know, we need a lot of chocolate this year. So it was super fun to use our Fat Eighth Pack and add a little bit of fabric to it to make the Tory Tote. The Tory Tote is a Quilt As You Go product from June Taylor. We've talked a lot about those in previous sessions. That's that pre-printed batting. It's pre-printed on 80-20 batting, so it, it washes really well. It is printed right here in southeastern Wisconsin, and they go together super, super easy. We took our Fat Eighth Pack. We chose one fabric that we wanted for our lining, and then we used it as well for these side accents and the back of our straps. So we took a yard and a quarter of extra fabric. We used these little baby bats for that. And then we decided we didn't want to piece anything, so we grabbed a quarter yard of this fun orange candy fabric to add a little spark for an accent. We have included with your club pack here the cutting instructions for how you're going to want to cut your lining and your different pieces for this. Now, what I want you to do, and Frank, why don't we take a look overhead to see uh, for our flying geese here. So we have some flying geese that we're doing a quilt as you go piecing of, and you can see how Heidi did a fantastic job of having of have worse of have a fantastic job of having everything faced. Okay, so what you want to do when you're doing something like this is that you want to fussy cut it. When we're fussy cutting, you can make a template. You could also use the strip tube ruler. And when you're doing the strip tube ruler like this, uh, you can mark on it what size you need and this will help you keep everything nice and oriented and you have the lines behind it. Okay, so the strip tube ruler or the mini strip tube ruler, that's not what they're intended to do, but it's a really extra great use for this ruler. And once again, you could cut these any which way that you wanted to, but uh, being able to keep these oriented upright makes your novelty fabrics just sparkle that much more. 
The other fun thing that we did with this particular design was that for this element right here, instead of using a whole two and a half inch strip piece, we pieced together parts of all of our different fat eighths into two and a half inch squares, put them together for this cool element of interest. And one of our fat eighths is our binding on the top. So a really nice ample bag and it is measures, how much does it measure? It measures 15 by 14 by four deep. So really nice. Of course, great for all of your chocolate, but it works very well as a great tote bag for any time of year. Super fun, super easy, check it out. Okay. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit more about our Arboretum fabric. So our Arbor, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit here. For the Arboretum fabric, it is a nice little sweet line that's a little elegant. We have all the pre-cuts, so we have the mini charms, the jellies, layer cakes, charms, half yard tower, fat quarter tower, and all of the pieces in the line. Works really well for a variety of elegant projects. And the project that we chose to make with this one was Trafalgar. So Trafalgar is, guess where it's from? It is from the Dog Lico Table-tastic book. Da, da, da. Remember we had the whole trunk show last month for the Table-tastic book. And we've been making a different one many of the months that we've been meeting since this was released. This month is no different. And you can either use a charm pack or your fat eighth pack. It's on page five. And in the book, he shows it with Kansas Troubles or with the basic gray naughty or nice. We did it with our Arboretum Metallic and it is three blocks put together. You could of course make it into a larger project by just making more blocks. It's very easily scalable. Let's look at some of our step outs on this block. We've included some additional cutting instructions for this pattern to work it with your fat eighth pack instead of charm packs. But it goes together super easily and you just simply have some half square triangle units, some connector corners, and then we're going to square and a square some blocks. So for our half square triangles, we're going to pair a background with a feature fabric. We are going to draw our lines with our quick quarter ruler, stitch our lines, cut it apart, press it open, and trim down as required. And then for our connector corners, we're going to have a rectangle, put on a square, this time we're drawing our line from point to point, stitching our line, flipping back and after we trim, and repeating on the other side. We're going to make lefts and rights. It's very important to remember that you're going to be making two different types. Then, for our square and a square, you're going to take triangles and put them on a square. You can see, and this is sometimes really, really tricky if you haven't done this for a while or have never done it before, that this triangle has this giant overhang. I think you can see this on this black background that we have on the board. And if you look here, this is more than a quarter of an inch, okay? In order to line these up, you are going to pinch the center so that you can line up the center of your triangle with the center of a block. Make sure you pin, 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 and then you're going to stitch a quarter inch. When you press it back, you can see you have these long dog ears. Leave it on for this part of the exercise and repeat it on the other side. 
and then you're going to put, so you'll have your top and bottom done now, you're going to do your side and side. So when you're doing your side to side, when you put this triangle on, this valley here is your quarter inch. It's magic, okay? So we're going to sew it on side to side. Then you have this square right here. And uh, we are going to make sure that they measure the size required. If they end up being a titch too big, you, would, you could square them up here. And even if you don't need to square them up, you'll want to make sure to take your little dog ears off. So let's go back and look at our whole table runner here, okay? So we have the block, and I'm going to take it down so that we can see it, okay? So we have here this block. Da, da, da. Okay, so we have the block, and you can see all the different units. We have our square and a square right here. We have a square and a square with a, with a background, and then the interesting pieces, and our other components along the way. I love that it looks way more complicated than what it is. It's fun to put together and very easy to make larger. Trafalgar, page five from Tabletastic. So much fun. What other fabric did we ha get? Well, um, we got the pre-cuts from All Hallows Eve. So this is the Fig Tree Halloween line, and I know it's been super hot and super popular. We got part of the line earlier in the year. We got our pre-cuts now, and I know we are awaiting the rest of the collection. And good news, I heard that it's being turned into a basic moving forward. So if you have been wanting to get started on a project for this particular fabric collection, you absolutely can hop in now, even if you can't get all of the pieces, because you're going to be able to get it all the way in through uh, 2021, which is super exciting. All right, what other fabric do I have? Well, behind us, I wanted to revisit this really fun fabric that we have from Sarah Watts that we got in earlier in the year, but it was before we were thinking about Halloween. So there is this great project panel. I haven't put it together yet. It is a happy Halloween. It is a banner that has a countdown calendar we have a pendant calendar, we have some pillows, and we also have a, um, yeah, we have pillow and then a little character, so very fun. Very, very fun here. I have a few of these left. And then for the other fabric that came along with it, there wasn't a ton, so these little trick-or-treat guys, they can be made into bags or squares in your quilt or pillows, pouches. Super fun. Candy, please. Candy. We need more candy. And then this piece here, this is really cool. It is printed fat quarters. So you buy one yard of fabric, and in that yard of fabric, you get four different fat quarters. How cool is that? So you get some spider webs and in two different colors and some bats in two different colors. You could leave this together as a very interesting cheater piece back, or you could cut it apart and um, make just a project that has different fabrics in it. If you want more than four different fabrics in your Halloween sampler, of course you can add a whole bunch of different ones. We have a ton of different Halloween fabrics upstairs. So that is all our fun Halloween stuff that we have to show you right here. 
I think it is time to talk about our Stitch Happens quilt. Let's take a peek at what we have to show you today. We're going to be working on part F. I know there's a few of you that have already finished your whole quilt. Some of you have actually gotten onto number two sewing machine. So cool. So how we want to see how your progress is. So if you have part or all of your Stitch Happens quilt together, make sure to post in the comments below, okay? We want to be able to see them. That should be lots of fun. For this, for the, our exercise today, we are going to be working on part F, okay? So the Stitch Happens pattern is right here. And we're going to look down at our board. So Stitch Happens, we do have copies of this pattern available in store. It is from Kelly Fannin Quilt Designs. And we're going to be hopping on to part F. Our samples here are done in solids. And then uh, we're also making a full size quilt in Kansas Trebles. Simple units again. We are going to be doing some flying geese using the heart method. So for the heart method, that's where you start with the large square with two small squares. Use your quick quarter ruler, draw your lines, stitch your lines, cut it apart, press open. This is a heart. You're then going to put your other square on top, draw your lines, stitch your lines, cut it apart, press open, and trim off your edges, okay? So we're making all of these flying geese and they're going to be our needle of our sewing machine. Then we are going to flip over and we're going to make some connector style flying geese. So the cool thing about making the heart method of the flying geese is if you want to make four flying geese that are the same fabrics. This is a very fabric efficient way to do it. Using the connector style flying geese, we're going to start with rectangles and squares. We're going to put our square on top of our rectangle, draw a line from point to point, sew, trim away our excess, flip open, and repeat on the other side. Since you have this little bit of waste, that's why we call the heart method a little bit more efficient since there is no waste. And then for these different units here, we're going to make half of flying geese units. Okay, just follow the instructions for the cutting. We'll be piecing them together to get our beautiful unit F. This is our solid version so that you can see it. And this is our Kansas Trouble version that we're making to match our sewing room. This is really a fun pattern. If you haven't started it yet, you could totally make a sewing machine in the style of the fabric that you sew with the most. Super fun. Okay, so now what else are we going to talk about? We have all sorts of fun things to talk about and show you. So we are going to hop over because we have something super special planned for our jelly roll day. All right, let's hop on over for our jelly roll day. The magic of the camera. Hello. So today we are looking at this super fun bonus pattern. It is Sparkle. It is part of Project Jelly Roll. And we did this up actually with a fat eighth. So a fat eighth pack you can cut into two and a half inch strips. And if you are just going to be using a fat eighth in background, this is the size that you're going to get. So this would be um, a nice little crib quilt that you could make. It is 12 blocks, one, two, three by one, two, three, four, so that's 12 blocks. Or you could make 
a quilt that's 65 by 65 with one jelly roll and four and three quarters yards for your background and border. These little units are made with a connector corners. So you start with a rectangle, a two and a half inch rectangle, and then you put on the little squares on either side. You put them, you sash them and put little corner stones, spin them around, and it's a super cool sparkler quilt. Really fun to go together. And we have a ton of jelly rolls in store for you. The official Moda jelly rolls that we have, we had, of course, the Ghouls and Goodies and the Arboretum Metallic. We also have the April Rosenthal Midnight Magic. We have some beautiful speckled by Ruby Star Society. We have junior jelly rolls. Now the junior jelly rolls have 20 instead of the 42. And we have some crescent and social from Ruby Star Society. We have some gorgeous Catalina from Fig Tree, as well as the All Hallows Eve that I showed you before. Getting into cr a little bit more Christmas here, we have the Christmas card by Sweetwater, Chill by Zen Chic. Last Christmas we have here is the Marches de Noël, the beautiful Three Sisters line. We have some great ombre metallic, uh, ombre confetti metallic from V and Company. Fun Halloween. We have a little bit left over of this because we love it, love it, love it so much. The Hollow Harvest Jelly Roll. This is the basic gray that has the super cute little spider on it. Works well with grunge. We don't have uh, much left of this fabric line, but it works super well with grunge. And Cultivate Kindness from Deb Strain. And then two awesome grunge junior jelly rolls. So only 20 in here. The white grunge and the grease, so gray. Super awesome. Also, we have two different jelly roll kits here. So we have the Winter White by Holly Taylor, and this has everything that you need to make the quilt in the box. So you have the panel there as well as a background. And then the Midnight Magic with the laser cut boo. So super fun, different uh, box kits that we have for you. Now I'm going to just go back. Uh, so if you are in Moda, we do have these sparkle patterns included in your club pack. All right, let's go back and do a recap. Okay, so I had a lot of fun today. How about you? I love seeing all of the show and tell that you're bringing. And for those of you who were able to come in and see the customer trunk show that we had for the Grunge Challenge, it was so amazing. I want to give you the results. We had some voting take place. So Lisa Giesfeld finished First, with customer voting with her Color My World, she advances to the Moda Finals. So cross your fingers and wish Lisa lots of luck with the Moda Finals for some cash prizes. Debbie Abel came in second place with Fly Away. That was Escaping Flying Geese. And Kate Dorsey had a fun showing and her quilt third place finish is Grunge Presence. So that's a small wall hanging that is super fun and who doesn't love grunge and putting it together as presents is awesome. For our fabrics that we showed you this month, we had our ghouls and goodies and we have this available here in some gorgeous half yard and fat quarter towers 
Ooh, ah. We have our grunge colors. Remember, we do carry all of the grunge palette in the flat. We have dots, we have stars, we have some metallics, we have glitter scrunches, arboretum metallic, and that fabulous fabric line goes really well with your classic traditional autumnal metallics. This ranges from your lights to your golds with some reds and greens, purples and blacks. Beautiful. I need some mums and marigolds in my garden. And then we have two classic Kansas Trouble Fat Eighth Packs that pair well with Kansas Troubles in your stash and Kansas Troubles in the store. Before we go, I want to give you just one final little exciting tidbit and I'm going to make sure that you join us this October. We are going to be stitching pink with Moda. They are presenting 30 fun amazing sampler blocks that we're going to be sharing with you. They're going to be available uh, from us probably from Moda as well. You can use your stash or we can hook you up with some fabric. There are going to be all sorts of different techniques in these samplers different skill levels. If you wanted to make one block a day, that's awesome. If you want to collect some block patterns, that's great as well. We're going to be using different fat eighth packs that we have, and that's going to just make an excellent, fun, scrappy quilt. And we're going to use a grunge background to tie everything together. So I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. We have uh, always lots of fun things going on. I look forward to seeing you with you soon, and happy quilting. <laughs>